Hi, my name's Dave, and I've spent most of my life outdoors here in Canada's western frontier. I believe one thing to be true. Outside is therapy. It's where we both reconnect and disconnect. I hope you'll come with me as we build, explore, and repeat. All right guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today, we're actually gonna do something that uh, one of you mentioned in the comments and we're gonna talk about something on the truck. We did just post our walk around video uh, about the Nissan Frontier, so if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it and I'll put a card up top, a little drop down thing. If you guys ever see those little things that drop down from the screen in the top corner, those aren't put on there by YouTube, they're put on by us and, and by myself and generally what I'll do is I'll try to link those videos to something that's happening on screen. So if I say something or, or I'm talking about something, I'll actually link to a video that might be adjacent to it. Um, but somebody had mentioned on the last walk around video that uh, they wanted a video on our onboard DIY air system. And during my walk around, I did notice that there are some things that we have to fix on it. So I figured I'd just take you guys along with me and show you about two and a half, almost three years later, what we did with our DIY onboard air system and how it might work for you and just kind of revisit and how it's been working for the last bit here. So let's do that. This onboard air system is not fancy. It's actually not fancy even the slightest and it's probably gonna cost you about two to three hours plus whatever air compressor that you're gonna have. We have a Motomaster and then a little bit of wiring. So that's, that's what goes on here. And you can really put this anywhere. Um, ours is running to our S-Pod, but it's real easy to install something like this. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what that looks like. I've pulled this grill off so many damn times. <clears throat> but I've literally only got two of these little clips left. And... Uh, something we'll probably have to purchase but to pull the grill off of a nissan frontier you're going to pull all those guys out and then the bottom here there's going to be i think four tabs that slide into a pocket so you're just going to grab it lift it forward put your hand in behind and give it a couple of taps and she pops out and now we have access to everything behind the grill with the exception to the winch which is further down below so this is what we've done about two years ago i took this Moto Master air compressor from Canadian Tire. I think this was on sale for 50 bucks. And I just, I am, I, we run, we have such limited space in our campers and in our trucks that everything that we put in here is, uh, the less things I have to pull out and open to use, the better. So I've permanently mounted this in the back, but what I did back then is I just kind of used zip ties and bent a couple of the tabs to hold it in place. And just over time, those have obviously rattled loose. So we're gonna turf them. Um, and now this thing's kind of just sitting in here. As you can kind of see, it's literally, it's literally just sitting here. And I've bent a couple tabs down. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna jump out back into our scrap bin and see what we can't find to MacGyver ourselves a plate that this can sit on. Okay, so this is a twin cylinder rapid inflator. Uh, with direct battery connection, um, 120 PSI max, 12 volt DC. And I don't think it gives me the CFM on here, unfortunately. Um, but it's going to be on the lower side of things. It takes me about, call it 10 minutes to fill up all my tires. I'm running 33 inch mud terrains. Um, and so far, honestly, I really, guys, I really have no problem with this whatsoever. Uh, it is a little tired. It's a little slower than it used to be. But essentially what we've done is when you buy this, it comes with a kit. It comes with like a, a gator, like alligator clips that you connect to your battery. And we've modified it quite a bit in order to use it for this purpose where it's hardwired. This is the air compressor itself, as you can see. 
She's a little worse for wear, a little dirty, a little beat up. On the bottom, it's got these rubber bushings, these rubber feet that just help with the vibrations. And so far, those were sitting exactly where they needed to, to help with the vibrations. But then what we've done is we took the factory wiring that came out the side here and basically tie, because there's a switch here. That's, that's how this would work. There was a little switch on the side. And I've basically cut that switch out. I filled it with a silicone. Uh, actually, this is Cicaflex. Um, filled up the whole gap of Cicaflex, then drilled a hole for my wires to come out here, right? And these now connect to the switch on the grill. There you go, this way. Is this bad boy right here. Now, this is a two switch system. So I've got the switch on the grill, and then I've also got the switch on the S-Pod. But because it's got a display on it, like a, a PSI display and a readout so you can see what your pressures are at, um, and a light, the, the S-Pod gives power to the unit, and then the unit distributes its power through the compressor. So because it's got a light and a display and, and a compressor on it, those are three different functions of this compressor. And the, the switch for the light is actually its own switch, and the switch for the compressor is its own switch on the body of the compressor itself. Uh, the S-Pod powers the compressor, and then the switch on the, on the front grill turns the compressor on. Um, so you have to turn it on and then turn it off to kind of start it. Um, but honestly, it's really not an inconvenience at all. And having that two-point verification always makes sure that the battery is never just, the, the compressor is never just left on. But right now what we need to do is figure out how to get this guy mounted back up there a little safer just so it's not inside rattling. Uh, we do have a radiator behind it and we're kind of messing up the fins a little bit. Um, and I don't want that to happen. So we're going to pull that guy out, put a little bracket in there. And as you can see beside it, we've also got the brain box for our winch. So there's lots of space in behind the grill of a Nissan Frontier that you can use um, to store stuff. So let's get this done. Bingo. So I think this piece right here, which looks like an old cutoff from one of our prototype parts. I think that piece right there is I think what I'm gonna try and grab. Now the trick is to do this without, oh, I might be able to, can I, I have short arms, I'm a fat guy, so this might be, this might be embarrassing, here we go. Oh, <sighs> that hurt the abs. Okay, we got our piece. Let's go see what we can make of it. All right guys, we're back from dumpster diving. And I found what might be like the perfect piece for this. I can't move this guy too much, like I said, because it is hard, it is hardwired. Right here, um, I'm going to rib it up against this guy through this 7 16 inch hole. I'm gonna put another one through the brace, this brace here, and then one through this brace here, which is a little flimsy, but it's gonna give us a flat surface. And this can sit on top, and then we can strap this to that plate. As you can see in that radiator right here, we're damaging some of those fins, and uh, that's not good. We don't wanna do that. Okay, step one is we're gonna take our plate, and we're gonna mark where we wanna make our holes and a nice stable spot for it. That looks awesome already. Okay, I'm gonna make a mark here. And we're gonna make a mark here. And then we're gonna make a mark here. Okay, so we've got our holes where we want them. And uh, you know, it's not perfect, but we are doing this stuff on a budget. And uh, with a Nissan Frontier, there's little to nothing you can buy that 
that does this kind of stuff. So you're just gonna have to do some customizing. All right. So now, now let's see what happens if we try to set a rivet. Maybe, maybe get away with it. Oh yeah, we will. That's, that's a beauty. Okay. Okay. All right guys, so there we go. That is the, the plate that we have in there. And that is, I mean, I can virtually shake the whole truck with it. So I think, I think that'll do just fine. Oh yeah, look at that, man. Look at that. That is, that's beautiful. Okay, so there we go guys. We've got that guy secured in there. We are gonna use a couple, just two zip ties just to hold this corner down because we're a little flimsy over here more than I'd like to be. Um, so we're actually, we've got some existing holes that we're gonna use for that. Now in the four years that this thing's been in here, I actually have only ever had to take this out once and that was to install the winch. So I don't actually expect having to do this again. So I'm not trying very hard to make it too accessible. Jesus, that just doesn't want to get tight, does it? There we go. Okay, that worked really well, I think. It's not, uh, remember this thing's sitting on rubber, rubber feet, so it's gonna move a little bit. But honestly, I think that that's gonna work out just fine. I would have liked to make this bend a little nicer, but I don't have a brake available to me today. Um, and really, this is just a quick and dirty, quick and dirty repair. And uh, sometimes it's all it needs to be. Sometimes it's just got to work. And uh, she's an old, old truck. So now the moment of truth here is will the grill fit back on or not? get the grill cool now how I use this doing uh, doing one of these little doohickeys so but yeah and then that just spins into your your uh, valve stem like that and then you just there you go Blow stuff off. Not a ton of pressure, but it's enough to cool you down on a hot day. That is probably the cheapest and the dirtiest onboard air install that you're going to find on YouTube but it works like a hot damn. No word of a lie guys, I have been, I've been through over a hundred water crossings with this exactly where it is. I have been in the deserts, I've been in the winter. It has never not worked for me. And I doubt it will never not work for you. So if you're looking for a cheap way to get some usable air, uh, mainly to inflate your tires, this is a really good way to do it. Honestly, I've also been called out all the time from family who have gotten like nails stuck on their tires and with like a patch kit like with the with the like the plug tire plug kit I have actually been able to like drive out and rescue family uh, that have had flat tires on the highway and in town and stuff just by having this simple setup in the truck 
So it's not just great for an adventure truck to have the ability to deflate and inflate your tires, to deflate and inflate kayaks and stuff like that. It's also super helpful just as a daily, uh, daily thing to have in your truck. Super affordable. This is one of the easiest and the cheapest things you can do to any truck to just keep stuff out of the cab, integrate it into the truck somewhere. And uh, I mean, it's relatively covered, but really it's not. Like, I mean, mud, dirt, and grime still gets in there um, and it's still working just fine. Quick and dirty Adventure Factory video for you guys. If you guys didn't know this weekend, uh, the BC Overland Rally is, is um, being held in Merritt. Merritt, BC, originally, um, we weren't sure if we were gonna have time to make it down there. And the, the whole expo team usually wants to go down there and, and kind of show our support for, for the Overland Rallies and Ray and his wife. They put on a really cool show. And uh, generally, generally we like to go down there and hang out. Um, but just between all everybody's work schedules and resources available, uh, it wasn't able to happen this year, not all of us. But I am taking the Frontier down uh, to kind of hang out with everybody in the in the area, not as a vendor, just as a guest. I really like the show. I've been going for a couple of years now. Um, since 20, I think the first show I went to was 2018, 2017. Um, the same year that I did Expo East and Expo West, which was 2017, I did, as when I started going to the BC Overland Rally. I haven't been to Expo East or West since 2017, um, but who knows, maybe next year with uh, Ken at 10X Campers, we can make an appearance with the Yucapac Camper Company. Okay guys, that's gonna be it. Um, we got a couple other things to do the Yuka pack before we leave. Plus we gotta pack the truck and clean the truck. It is just so full of dust and adventure stuff inside the truck that uh, I, need, I need to vacuum it and make it a livable space for a road trip out to BC. And, uh, and yeah, so looking forward to seeing you guys at the BC Overland Rally. Hope you guys come out and say hi. Um, if you see the truck and you wanna look at the truck, I'll be hanging out around camp and uh, maybe we can do some do some of the uh, the trail stuff since we're not going to be at a booth. That's I think I have the most fun when I do it that way anyway, to be honest. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, I appreciate you guys all. Hit that like and subscribe button if you like cheap rednecky fixes for your truck. Um, live free, be wild, and we'll see you guys in the next one.